So here we have an air standard Brayton cycle operating with 300 Kelvin and 85 kilopascal at the inlet to the compressor. So that's T1 and P1 specified. The compressor pressure ratio is 11. So P2 divided by P1 is 11.0. And the maximum temperature is 1450 Kelvin, so that's T3, isn't it? 1450 Kelvin. On the basis of a cold air standard analysis, using this value of C sub V, this value of C sub P, and if you do the ratio, you find that K is close enough to 1.4, 1.399 something. You know, it's 1.4. We'll just use it 1.4. Determine all of these things. So one thing to do is go ahead and make that sketch. Go ahead and get the temperature entropy sketch. Put your states on there so that you know 1 to 2 is isentropic as well as 3 to 4 is isentropic, as well as the maximum temperature state 3. You can also make a quick table of a state. 1, 2, 3, 4. Talk about the pressure in uh, KPA. Talk about the temperature in Kelvin. All right. Um, because it's a cold air analysis, any time we need to change in H, we'll just use one of those specific heats, C sub P times delta T. True? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, what, what is it again for the cold? Uh, what is the purpose of taking cold air standard analysis? Well, with uh, the air standard analysis are those things where we uh, replace. Um, it's only air. It's never CO2 and water vapor. And uh, we replace the intake exhaust by a heat exchanger and then we replace the combustion by a heat exchanger, those things for the air standard. Now with the cold, that's an additional assumption that we're going to use uh, constant specific heats evaluated at room temperature or atmospheric ambient temperature. Even though the temperature is spanking hot at state 3, it's up to 1450 Kelvin. We'll just use it around 300 Kelvin. And when you do a cold analysis, you get that analytic expression for the thermal efficiency. Just like we got for auto and diesel, you can get the analytic expression for the thermal efficiency of the Brayton cycle. So, so uh, let's go ahead and put in here uh, 85 and 300. How do I get uh, pressure at state 2? It's not 85 anymore. What is it? You multiply by you multiply by the pressure ratio of 11, true? So if you multiply by 11, you'll get some number. So this is uh, 85 times 11, OK? Uh, how about the temperature at 2? How do I find the temperature at 2? Well, we just wrote that equation down, didn't we? Mm -hmm. It was just, it's right here. I just, you use this analytic expression, and you apply it for the compressor. And that's how you get the temperature at state 2, true? Okay. So you get, uh, I'm going to call it T2S. Now, how about the pressure at state 3? It's the 85 times 11. So you get the same pressure. It's the same. They're the same. How about T3? Well, that was specified, 1450. That was given as our maximum temperature in the cycle. And then the pressure at 4, you're back down to the pressure at 1. And you do isentropic expansion, T4S. And the equation for T4S, we just did it right here. True? So it depends on K and the, and the um, pressure ratio. So for part A, the temperature at the compressor outlet, that's... Uh, T2 is equal to whatever T2S. How about for B? Peak pressure. That's almost too easy. That's P2 is equal to P3 is equal to 85 times 11. How about C? Temperature at the turbine outlet. Isn't that T4? And that's the equation we just had for T4S, that expansion through the turbine. How about D? 
the heat addition in the burner. So, so uh, this is where we have our heat addition from state two to three in the burner. That heat exchanger, sometimes you call it a burner. So what is that Q in? It's going to be H3 minus H2. And because of constant specific heats, we put C sub P T3 minus T2. True? So that's how you would calculate it. Now, let me ask a question. Uh, well, let me continue on. What is the net work for the cycle? W net. You can do just like before. You can get it WT minus WC, or you can get it QN minus Q out. I recommend the first time through, do it both ways. And then get a lot of confidence in your calculations, right? So if you do it this way, you have to get what Q out is. Here is Q out as a positive Q out. Because I put the negative sign right there, I'm treating Q out as a positive quantity. And so Q out is, this is state four right here, is C sub, well, maybe write it in terms of H's first, H4 minus H1, so it's C sub P, T4 minus T1. Once you have all the temperatures, boom, you're, you're, you're getting all of them. So that's how you then calculate the net uh, work for this cycle. What about F, the thermal efficiency? It's the network. That's the answer for part E divided by Q in. The answer from part D. True? And then G, the back work ratio. Well, here you need to get the work of the compressor and divide it by the work of the turbine. 